Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's project, I've got to work on the HVAC on a buddy of mine's camper. It's a Sunnybrook 27 RKF fifth wheel. It's a pretty nice little camper. And what I've got to do is pull the furnace out and service it. Uh, I started looking at it and the thing's full of dirt daubers and wasp nests and all kinds of stuff. So before we can fire it up and get some heat in this thing, I need to take it out and clean it. So here's the furnace on this thing. The uh, gas connection and stuff is going to be inside this box. I don't know if I'm going to be able to access it from out here or if I'm going to have to go inside. Take the cover off. I've turned the gas bottles off. Uh, it, I don't believe there's any gas in the system because this thing hasn't been used in a while. It's a 13 16 wrench to get that uh, gas line loose. And I don't think you could get in here with a crescent wrench to get it off. I think you're probably going to have to have the right wrench. And of course, it's buried back up in there, so you can't really get a finger on it either. There's the gas line. You can see it comes out. Um, actually, looks like it runs underneath the refrigerator. But it's buried pretty far back in there. loose. Now I'm going to pull all of these square drive screws out. And there's going to be butyl tape behind this thing as a water seal so i'll have to more than likely replace that when i get this off of here and if you're worried about gas uh leaking on this thing whenever you're disconnecting it if you've been using your camper you probably want to go ahead and shut your gas bottle off, turn on the stove, light the stove, and let the gas in the line burn off. Um, I'm not overly concerned about it because, like I said, it hasn't been used in a while. And all I'm doing is bending these tabs up that are part of the housing for the furnace because i got to straighten them out to get them to go through the slots in this door. This butyl is sticky. This stuff is pretty thin, the framework, I mean, so you want to be kind of careful because you can bend it. Let's try to see what it's going to take to get this thing out of here. Looks like that's the wires coming into that plug in the back. I'm hoping this thing's just gonna butt up to 
the main plenum for the duct work in the back there. <sighs> Let's see what we can get this hung up on getting it out of here. This thing ought to just slide out. Of course, there may be something underneath the dang cabinet in there holding it. All right, this mess got a little more complicated. Uh, under the stove was an access panel. And there's a screw here and then one on the opposite side over here. And you've got to take that panel out. And then there are screws underneath the cabinet under the stove here here that hold the thing in and you've got to undo this duct work So that little piece holds your gas line in. It just slides over the housing right here. There appears to be something, some part of the plenum sticking down underneath of this thing and caught up in the bottom part of the mount that's underneath Surely you don't have to take the whole dang cabinet apart to get this thing out. All right, I had to go inside and pick it up over. The. No. Oh, come on. Is this thing hanging on? I'm definitely doing more disassembly on this. Holy crap! Okay, that was way more disassembly on this thing than should have been necessary. But the way that they put this stupid thing together, you can't take it out as a unit like you would normally expect to do because there's flanges sticking down in here that got caught up on this and the hole's not big enough to get it out. So, and of course the screws come in from the bottom that hold these flanges on the housing. I don't have a clue how they got this thing in here. Good God, what a friggin' mess. All right, so what we're gonna do is bend these flanges up flat so that I can get it back in the dang hole later because I need to put this on here. There's so many screws in there that I'll never get it lined up with everything sticking in this hole. Okay, now I need to try to figure out what we can do to clean this mess up. <sighs> And that right there is why we got to do this. Okay, I'm going to take this wing nut loose and pull the circuit board out.
definitely did not make this easy to work on. Apparently, this exhaust is rusted on here is why I can't easily get that out. But there's a wing nut right here that if you loosen it off, this flange is welded to this pipe. And this thing has either got dirt daubers or rust or something in here, but I can tap it and get it to come on off of there. Oh yeah, that whole thing's full of dirt daubers. This stupid thing would've never worked. Well, I guess I'll stick the vacuum on this thing and see how much crap I can suck out of there. Hopefully that's gotten it cleaned out enough to function correctly. Since I'm not going to be able to get in a lot of these places with vacuum, I'm going to go ahead and use the air compressor and try to blow some of this mess out of here. Before I put all this mess back together, I'm going to go ahead and clean this hole here. Don't know how much of this y'all are going to be able to see. I'll try to get the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. But I think the only way this thing is going to go in here is like this without the flange on the bottom of it and then I've got to pick this up screw the flange to it I wedged the block in there to see if we can get this to stay up and maybe get this screw in
Now that we got the flange on for the plenum, I came around here and got the ductwork connected back up to the heater unit. So what I'm gonna do now is get the uh, power cord connected back up and get everything squared back up in the hole and see if we can start getting it screwed back down and then I'll put the control board in and see if we can make this thing work. And I got the gas line flare fitting started by hand. Of course, because I bent that flange. Stuff doesn't want to line back up and drop in. There we go. Okay, so now let's see if we can get this back on there. It says this side in, so it goes on like this. like that. That works for me. And this should this one goes here. This one goes here because I marked them. So that's for the blower, that's the main power. This appears to go to the igniter. Tighten the wing nut back down. And then this just goes on that little circuit board that was sticking out. Now I need to get some soapy water and test that gas line. I have turned the gas back on. See a leak before I put the exterior cover back on. I'm gonna see if this thing's gonna fire up. I put this thing back in, tried to make it work, 
Still didn't work. It would ignite, but stay on for a few seconds and then go off. And so I pulled it back out. And I don't know if y'all could see that dirt dauber nest down in there, but I figure there's probably more. So that's part of our problem. The dirt dauber nest that was down inside the heat transfer chamber was actually attached to this burner. And I think that's why we were having a problem getting the thing to burn. But before I put it back in there, I am going to uh, go ahead and clean this up and uh, get the rust off and make sure that everything will actually function as best I can tell without it being in there. So this nut that's on the bottom here is a 3 8 And then these two screws here are going to be the oh they're either quarter or five sixteenths or quarter good lord Definitely did not want that to fall off. You've got to disassemble this whole dang thing just about to do anything to it. Okay. So, if you're not familiar with this thing, the way it works, your propane comes in here and you've got the uh, solenoid that allows your gas to flow or not flow. And then this is the orifice that diffuses the propane or, or sprays the propane into the burn chamber or the burner diffuser here. And so it kind of spreads it across here and it burns on the surface of this. And the orifices are a standardized size across here, but now where this uh, dirt dauber nest was stuck to it, the rust has started forming and it's kind of started closing these up. So I'm hoping that cleaning this up is going to uh, solve our burn problem so that we get a clean consistent burn and it doesn't shut down due to uh, the flame sensor not sensing a flame much like the pilot light in the oven will shut down if it's not heating up the thermocouple and letting the gas flow. Oh, well, that's a little better. And of course there's bug parts down in there, so I'm gonna fire up the air compressor so we can blow that mess out. got the stuff cleaned out of there.
it's going to be uh, half or seven sixteenths. Okay, the jet that's in here is a number 52, and it is 7 sixteenths wrench size. Yeah, oh, how much junk can there be? Of course, <laughs> I don't know that y'all are going to be able to see that or not, but there's something has decided to live in here as well. So I need to clean that out. wonder we got this thing to ignite at all. And what I'm doing now is scraping some of the corrosion off of these contacts. Um, this one on the bottom is the igniter and this is your flame sensor so the igniter is down here so it works like a spark plug and you've got a voltage that comes in from the control board that sends a spark across here and once the flame is going then this senses that there is a fire and it continues to let the gas flow anyway I need to clean some of the corrosion off of the contacts or the connectors on here because like everything else it sits and there's humidity and moisture and bugs and it makes things not function correctly. Let's put this mess back together and see if we can get it back in and make it work. See the little boot for the igniter, you got to fit through there with those other wires. And they did not make it easy. Had we made it just a touch bigger. To get it to connect, you've got to push the boot back. And then get back in here behind this. Oh, get on there. That 
Might need to have just a touch more slack. I can never remember how these stupid plastic things work. About half the time I end up breaking these things because you've got to Squeeze them together to get them back through the hole and they crimp on the wire. All right, so the way these go in, there's a, a little slot and then this piece basically bends the wire around it so you can't pull it in and out and then it's wedge shaped and you push it in and then there's a shoulder that catches on the inside of the sheet metal well i needed just a little bit more slack to get all of this out of a bind and so anyway you gotta fight with these to make them work And that boot should go around the igniter like on a spark plug to seal the moisture out, but it doesn't because of the way that this is all put together. It's, it's too close to the valve to get completely on the igniter. You can get it close, but you can't get it all the way on there. Right, let's put the wire smasher back on and I'm always afraid that I'm gonna cut the wire whenever I use one of these things there we go now there's enough slack that that can be taken apart next time although I'm hoping it's not me doing it now we can put the screws back in three screws that hold that whole assembly together. Actually, it's four screws. Holding up this morning, that butyl tape's not very sticky. Put the exhaust pipe on. hanging on the gas pipe to get the sheet metal picked up past the plenum mount that's in there you can move it around and start hooking stuff back up this is the power main power thermostat wire all of that it goes on this left hand side as you're facing it from the outside get the gas line back down and it's a flare so it can be somewhat challenging to get started you gotta get it square oh, I actually got it started so that's the piece of flex duct that needs to connect back in the side. I don't know if I can, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a notch right there that corresponds to 
a locking tab in this so in theory it should hook on the bottom and then twist into that and of course can't see lock oh yes oh got lucky let's see if this thing will fire off and make heat now it's gonna have to purge the air out of the line great now, oh well it helps if you turn everything on dummy make sure you've got the uh <laughs> main power switch on before you try to test everything so let's see if it'll make heat now and it's still going to need to purge the air out of the line because before since i had the main power off it wasn't opening the gas solenoid After having gone through all of the cleaning and all the other BS on this furnace, put it back in yesterday and um, it was still doing the same thing. It would try to ignite and would not light off. So since I had to go in town to the RV place to get parts anyway, and they have a test bench, I just took the whole unit in and had them put it on a test bench. And they said that the high temperature sensor was bad. And it's a royal pain to get to. You've got to take the entire housing apart on this particular furnace and the high temp sensor is between the two sections of the heat exchanger. So I just had them do it. I uh, brought it back and put it in and it's having exactly the same problem. Now they said they test ran it and this was the problem on their test rig and it ran fine. Well, that leaves the only other variable that I can think of as being the propane side of it. It is, um, I suspect, not getting enough propane. And part of the reason I suspect that is that there is an indicator on top of the uh, regulator assembly that red for it's out, green for it's good and as soon as the furnace tries to light it goes almost full red indicating that it's out of propane and uh it doesn't matter what propane appliance you turn on it shows a little bit of red so i'm thinking that it's not getting enough propane gas flow I, I'm going to try that. Uh, this is turning into a parts changing uh, operation instead of a uh, diagnose and repair. But I'm kind of running out of options. So we're going to try that and see if it'll fix it. So I've disconnected the two bottles. Now I'm taking the, taking the clamping mechanism apart so I can get this stuff out of the way. This is a replacement regulator that I got at the local uh, RV place. Um, 
I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we're gonna try it because I need this thing to be functional and it is not cooperating to this point. So it looks like that's a standard screw pattern on this bracket in order to take the switch valve or flip-flop valve off of it I've got to take the bracket off because it won't clear the bracket and unscrew and we need to move the bracket to the other one anyway so I really hope this solves our problem. I need to put a little bit of pipe dope on this. And this is a Rector Seal 5 that is approved for gas. It says not to use it with oxidizers. So apparently if you... Ah, dog, I hate using this stuff. If you use it with oxidizers, apparently it can cause problems kind of like you don't put oil on the uh, cap of your acetylene bottle or on your regulators because petroleum products being exposed to acetylene uh, it becomes explosive so bad stuff happens Okay, that's got that back together, so let's put the hose on it that feeds the camper and see if that fixes our problem. It is 11 sixteenths. I just grabbed the wrong wrench. So now that we have put this back together next step turn the gas on and check for leaks and there And there. Well, now let's see if we can make this stupid thing work. So there you go, 
It was a combination of dirt daubers, stuff just being dirty, the high temp switch bad, the thermostat needed to be repaired slash rebuilt, and the propane regulator was bad. So now it works. Since we now have a functional furnace, the next step is to put everything, finish putting everything back together. And in order to do that, I need to replace the butyl tape that I tore up on the bottom here. And you can buy this stuff at uh, pretty much any RV supply place. You can get it at a lot of you know, hardware stores, plumbing places. Um, but it's just a, uh, a sealing tape that goes under flashing and, and on campers, you'll see it all over the place. So it's real sticky and it's got a paper, wax paper on one side and you just peel the stuff off and stick it on there. And throw it on the ground so it gets grass and everything stuck in it. And if you've got a, a situation like this has a corrugated siding on it, um, you can double it up and it'll make up the gap and it, it, it sticks to itself really well. So it works, works for filling up gaps and stuff pretty well. So all I'm gonna do is take some of these pieces and where the corrugations are that I know I'll need to make up space. I'll stick a little of that in there. And you're much more concerned about the top than the bottom because it's like, you know, shingles or anything else, the water will run out the bottom. This particular mounting frame has slots in it that the casing around the furnace lines up with and goes through. And then that casing, those tabs bend over and then your screws go through that to tie everything together solidly. Some of these screws are put in at a crazy angle. See, this thing has an uh, aluminum frame in it, so you kind of need to, best as possible, get it lined up with the hole it came out of. There we go. If you got a little probe of some kind, you can usually probe around and find the hole.
Now, that little screen right there should, in theory, prevent most of what we had to deal with to make that furnace work. Should. 